All right, we are back. Build 2013. Beautiful San Francisco. Love the Bay Area. Soma's here, man. Great to see you. Good to see you, All right, so you met, last time we had Soma on, Soma, of course, is the vice president of DevDiv. You run the whole tools division. Um, was at the launch of Visual Studio 2012. September 2012. Yes. yes. And so we've come a long way since then, and now you have 2013 preview just released today. Tell me a little bit about what you've been up to in the time since we talked. Sure. If you go back to the Visual Studio 2012 launch, one of the things we talked about, I don't know if you remember that or not, but one of the things we talked about was, you know, hey, we really want to get to a stage where we want to be delivering ongoing value to our customers, right? Yeah. And we said, like, you know, hey, we are going to think about like, you know, how we deliver that value in a regular cadence, okay? And we said, like, you know, maybe we'll call it an update. Who knows what we're going to call it, but we, <laughs> we want to do something there kind of thing, right? Okay. And the good news is, in the last nine months or so since then, we've delivered uh, three updates to Visual Studio 2012. We delivered update one, update two, and most recently, as of today morning, we delivered Visual Studio 2012 update three, right? And the good news is like these updates contain both what I call you know bug fixes, as well as some feature enhancements, right? Mm -hmm. So anything that we think you know, hey, we got an idea, we get a customer request, we want to do something different, or we want to add some new functionality and capability, and if we can get that done in a reasonable time frame, we want to be able to make it available then and there to our customers, as opposed to having to wait for the next big release, yes. right? So we sort of feel like you know we we delivered on the commitment and the promise that we made at Visual Studio 2012 launch, that we are going to get into a, a much faster cadence for being able to deliver ongoing value to our customers. Excellent. So in parallel to that, and, and when I talked about update one, update two, update three, it's, uh, it's sort of new capabilities, both for Visual Studio, the client side tools, as well as for Team Foundation Server and Team Foundation Service. Mm. If you think about Team Foundation Service, for example, we are now sort of updating the servers every three weeks. Because you know the cloud cadence is completely different than like you know what I call box software cadence, mm. and we've been able to do that. So in addition to all of these, there are two other things that we've done. Okay. Okay. One, the first thing I want to say is like you know Git support, right? We've yes. sort of you know taken a huge step forward in terms of deeply embracing Git. That's a statement on Visual Studio embracing Git. Mm -hmm. That's a statement on Team Foundation Server and Team Foundation Servers embracing Git. You know Git, as you know, is sort of like you know the de facto. Mm -hmm. uh, protocol that people use for being able to source or uh, store source code, yep. and we said like you know, hey, rather than like sort of you know fighting that, why don't we just embrace the trend? And this is like you know you've heard us talk a lot about like you know, hey, we want to meet developers where they are, mm -hmm. and this is sort of one such thing Great. to say like you know, we are going to embrace Git. Mm -hmm. Now, apart from all of that, <laughs> <laughs> we've also been hard at work on the next version of Visual Studio and .NET framework. Yeah, and so today morning. I uh, know you saw Steve's announcement in the keynote. We delivered a preview of Visual Studio 2013 and .NET 451 mm -hmm. hand in hand with Windows 8.1 preview so that people who are excited about like the new Windows platform and want to be able to build connected <laughs> device applications that, they st that stay connected to Windows Azure mm -hmm. using Azure mobile services should absolutely be excited about the tool set that they're getting in Visual Studio 2013 and .NET 451. Excellent. So I mean, there you have it. I mean, .NET is, is here to stay, right? I mean, and a lot of people in the community have been concerned about, hey, what happened to .NET? You know, Silverlight you know, isn't going to evolve anymore, and somehow Silverlight equals .NET. That's, but it's not the case. So it's wonderful that you guys have been reinvested or continue to invest. You never de-invested in the first place. So for all you guys out there, so here's that's what I would the say. truth. .NET is here to stay, very much here to stay. And more importantly, I shouldn't be saying this, but since I'm among friends, I'm going to say this. Tomorrow, we are going to say a lot more about .NET, and I would ask people to just hang in there for 24 more hours yeah. so that they can get a feel for, like, you know, hey, what are we doing with .NET? What does our commitment look like with .NET? And people are going to be excited about what we have to say. Excellent. And of course, there's all the other kind of programming models that we support. So ask questions. We have Soma here. Uh, this is your chance to ask the individual who runs all of our tool uh, divisions, um, anything that you want. So let's move along here uh, in some sense. Um, what are you do? Like, for, for example, are you going to be in any talks down here? I mean, are you, are you in a keynote or are you I'm just not, kind of making sure? I'm, I'm, I'm going to like have some uh, press conversations and customer conversations. Perfect. And then I'm back. Excellent. Continuing to finish the product because as much as we've done the preview today, yeah, yeah, yeah. we still have some more work to do 
over the next several months before we can sort of you know wrap up and finish sure. this next version of Visual Studio and .NET 4.1. So there's a lot of work uh, that the team is uh, still going through. I know. I mean, kudos to your team. I mean, the engineers are cranking. So one of the things I would ask you is when we, re we, we you promised that there would be these incremental releases and you sure. delivered on mm -hmm. them. How has that impacted the way that you engineer inside of your organization? The, I, I would say like, you know, hey, the, whenever you think about the cadence, that sort of is a, is a word or a sort of a, a phenomenon that you need to think about as it relates to your engineering system mm -hmm. and more importantly, how your developers or engineers in the team are working. I mean, in some sense, like, you know, you can argue that like, you know, hey, we are working on service updates, Team Foundation service updates, right? We are working on Visual Studio updates. We are working on the next version of Visual Studio. So you, and we are working with pretty much every platform group in the company because all the platforms aren't shipping on the same day, right? Yes. So you know, Azure has its own cadence, Windows has its cadence, Office has its cadence, and because we deliver tools for all of Microsoft platforms, we have to plug in with the different platform cadence as well. So our life is a little bit complicated from that perspective. One of the things that we've done is like you know, spent a lot of our energy and time thinking about what does our engineering system inside the division look like that is going to enable us to do these multiple things in parallel and keep our engineers highly productive. Yes. The last thing, you know, or the first thing and the last thing that an engineer cares about is like, hey, I'm here to do my job, which usually is like, you know, I have an idea, I want to build a feature, I want to deliver that feature to my customer, take away anything that is a seeming roadblock in my way and let me do my job. Mm -hmm. So the tools and the processes that we have in place is all geared towards like, hey, we have a cadence, you know, desire or a goal or commitment in terms of what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And we have like, you know, multiple different things that we need to keep moving forward. You know, how do we focus on that? And that's something, in, in the past, you know, one thing that we've done is, we would say like, hey, we ship a product release and let's look at, you know, what our engineering system should look like. And then we would make some investments and we would put that in place and then do that for the next three years we ship the next version. Exactly. In this world where like, you know, everything is shipping all the time, you have to start from planning. Like, you know, hey, you have to think about continuous planning. Mm. You have to think about continuous delivery. You have to think about continuous feedback. Mm. You have to think about continuous quality. Mm. And you want to make sure that the tools and the engineering investments that you make enable you to do all of these. Okay. And so let's get to questions from Niners. Thank you guys for asking. Um, Earl wants to know, can I run VS 2013 with VS 2012 in one machine? Yes. Ah, excellent, <laughs> man. No, you know, the, the, these two things run side by side, so you should be able to run VS 2012 and VS 2013 on the same machine. Awesome. Nick wants to know, will Visual Studio 2013 have support for hardware programming, like directly programming any hardware right inside of Visual Studio? Uh, I don't know what you mean by hardware programming. So if, you, if you talk about like you know, building hey, driver, you must be talking about yeah, building, building drivers. drivers kind of thing. I would say like you know you can use the DDK for example that Windows has. Yeah. And uh, you should be able to use that inside Visual Studio to build the driver. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, and we know that, like, you know, hey, the Windows team, for example, mm -hmm. has worked closely with us between the Windows DDK and with uh, Visual Studio mm -hmm. to make it more easy for people to be able to do that. Absolutely. And just so, I mean, uh, he knows, you know, if you look at, we have the hackathon going over right next to us, and Clint Rutkus is there. He likes to build robots, which is hardware, um, and he's using Visual Studio. So. It it's all depends upon what the API is and what the output is. If it's a driver, absolutely. If you want to write C code, rock and roll, assembly, go for it. For example, if you want to program against the Connect controller, yes. you can do that from Visual Studio, right? Absolutely. Using the Connect for Windows SDK. You got it. Yeah. All right, Nick, uh, will VS 2013 have full support for C++ 11? Get it, get uh -huh. it. <laughs> hey, you know, we should say that, of course, C++ is also loved and respected and C innovating. C++ and is absolutely loved. Yes. It's absolutely a top tier sort of programming environment for us. You sort of briefly mentioned this a couple yes. minutes ago, right? As much as we talked about .NET, mm -hmm. remember there are three programming stacks, so to speak, that we support on our platforms. We support C++ with XAML. We support uh, C++ with DX. Yep. We support C Sharp and VB uh, with XAML. We support HTML5 and JavaScript. And all these three programming models or programming environments are what I call first class citizens in our Windows platform. And by extension, Visual Studio treats them as first class citizen and like, you know, whether it is programming languages or libraries or runtimes or tools, what have you, mm -hmm. we support all of these three environments and you will see innovation continue to happen in all these three things. 
Now, the specific question was like, you know, hey, what about like this uh, C++11 features. kind of thing? Yeah. I would say we started down the C++11 journey with Visual Studio 2012. We got a few things done in 2012, and since then, we've been hard at work, and you've got, you've got a whole bunch of new things coming for C++11 and Visual Studio 2013. Now, are we completely done? Probably not. I'm sure there is some more work to be done. Mm. One thing I would encourage people to do is Herb Sutter. People know who Herb Sutter yes. is, right? Herb is going to be here on Friday, and he's going to give a talk on C++ as it relates to Visual Studio 2013 and C++11. Mm. But more importantly, he's also going to give you the roadmap for what people should expect as we finish up supporting C++11 in the fullest possible way. Awesome. And that's going to be streamed live this Friday starting at noon. So that'll answer your question. Jonathan wants to know, will incremental updates still be released for VS 2012, or is update 3 the last one? Uh, that's something we are going to sort of continue looking at. We feel like, you know, hey, Visual Studio uh, 2012 update 3. With that, we feel like, you know, hey, maybe we can sort of uh, be done with the updates. If there is a need or a demand from customers, we will continue looking at it. Uh, if there are bug fixes particularly or security issues or other kinds of like you know high priority issues that come up we want to be able to have the flexibility to tell a vs 2012 update 3 customer we will update you with that excellent uh daniel i love all the questions thank you niners uh what is the distribution model of net in the future nuget uh nuget is definitely a distribution model for us kind of thing yeah uh, today you, you should know that net ships in multiple places right Whenever you get a new version of Visual Studio, you get .NET. Whenever you get a version, new version of Windows, you get .NET, which ships in Windows kind of thing. And then you got .NET that we sort of update for other plat for older platforms, so to speak, right? Uh, NuGet seems to be working really well for us from a distribution model perspective, so we are absolutely going to continue supporting that. Excellent, man. Yari wants to know, will, v will VS 2013 support older projects and solutions created in older versions of Visual Studio uh, in TFS. Yes, we, we had a feature that we sort of you know, did in VS 2012 that we call the round tripping feature. Basically what it really does is like, and it says like, you know, hey, if I have a project that I created with sort of you know, the previous version of Visual Studio kind of thing, I can open it up in the new Visual Studio and then I can decide whether I want to migrate the project or whether I want to leave it because the thing that most people care about is like, you know, hey, I've got a development shop of say 50 people. You know, 20 people are using VS 2012, 30 people are using VS 2013. Can I work on the same project? Can I not work on the same project? Do I need everybody to be on the same version of Visual Studio? So we've said that, like, hey, we are going to provide what I call project compatibility across versions of Visual Studio, multiple Great. versions of Visual Studio. Excellent. Now, one of the things that we've noticed in Visual Studio over the years as it's gotten more complex, much more feature rich, and beginning with the advent of the new UI written in WPF, is that there was uh, some performance degradation, which I know that you guys really worked on hard in VS 2012. So the question is, are you still, are we gonna see performance improvements continue in 2013? Absolutely. Performance continues to be a key focus area for us, both from a tool set perspective in Visual Studio and from a runtime perspective in .NET, right? If you look at .NET 451, for example, and ask me like, hey, what are the top three things that I feel good about .NET 451, yeah. performance is absolutely at the top of the list, right? Right on. Yeah, whether you think about like, you know, startup performance, which, you know, historically has been somewhat of an issue, yeah. or whether it is like, you know, ongoing sort of, you know, runtime performance, mm -hmm. we've done a lot of work to continue improving the performance of uh, .NET code. Excellent, man. Uh, I think Visual Studio is an amazing IDE. However, I'm a developer that really, really despises the flat UI scroll bars of Windows 8. Can I load a Windows 7 theme? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch, man. Uh, yes. I would tell you one thing, though. Like, yeah. no, uh, we got what I call you know, a lot of uh, good feedback, yeah. constructive feedback, when we uh, made UI changes in Visual Studio 2012. Okay? Uh, again, and I think we should wait till tomorrow, because I think the team is going to talk a little bit more about like, you know, what specifically we are doing or not doing kind of thing. But one of the things that we are doing in Visual Studio 2013 is enable people, at least we are giving them a few themes and saying, like, you know, hey, why don't you pick and choose the theme that, that you like the best kind of thing. Okay. I, don't, I can't tell you that it's a Windows 7 theme, 
uh, but it is like you know, hey, there is you know people particularly talk about colors and stuff like yes. that. So there is a you know a color option that people will have yeah. in terms of picking and being able to pick and choose the theme that mat that they like the best. Awesome. I love I love personally the dark theme. Turn the lights off. Have the nice dark theme with the green. Oh, it's beautiful, man. I'm it's glad you. I'm, I'm glad you like that. Yeah. I can't tell you that everybody there, you know, uh, is on the same page no, as you. Probably not. But some people like the dark theme. Some people like the light theme. Some people yeah. want a colored theme. Yes. So it, it it varies all around. Right on. Plus, you know, it is a programmable uh, system. So why don't you write the Windows 7 theme? It's possible. All right. <laughs> Vikas wants to know: Is .NET 4.51 is it in place upgrade? Yes, it is an in-place upgrade kind of thing, right? And we do understand that, like, you know, hey, whenever we are talking about the in-place upgrade of uh, .NET Framework, that means the the bar on compatibility is really, 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 really high. Sure. And I know that the team has sort of taken that to heart. Uh, but looking at, like, you know, hey, what people want and what we are doing and how best to sort of navigate through this, mm -hmm. we felt that like .NET 451 making an in-place upgrade is probably the right thing to do. Excellent. Ross wants to know, how are developers going to manage all the different versions of VS? It's difficult enough at the minute without the release cycle increasing. Will we ever get to a point where we just have Visual Studio that gets updated like Chrome? I love Ross. I don't know who Ross is, but I love Does this Ross guy. Ross work for you? No. <laughs> I was just playing. Great question, right. Ross. No, the reason I say that is because that, that's definitely like you know, where we want to get to, right? You know, my sort of ideal uh, dream is like, you know, hey, someday I can walk up to you and say, like, you know, hey, are you a Visual Studio customer? If you're a Visual Studio customer, you have access to the latest and greatest bits. There isn't like, you know, a Visual Studio 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, update 3, update 7, update 9 kind of thing, right? <laughs> you know, particularly when you're living in a services world, you yes. know, where things get delivered on the cloud kind of thing, you really don't want to have to deal with the complexities of the multiple versions and what do I need to have, what do I have, and how do these things coexist kind of thing. In some sense, like, I want to be able to say, like, hey, take a bet on me, and I'm going to, like, or take a bet on us, I should say, Microsoft, and we will you know, make sure that you have access to the latest and greatest Visual Studio, and you don't need to worry about 12, 13, 14, and all these things. Absolutely. But that also means the compatibility bar is high, that we need to make sure that we continue making your experience better uh, as opposed to otherwise. So there's a lot of things that we need to do, but that's the world that we are all moving towards, and I want to get there as much as the next person. Excellent, man. So uh, Thien wants to know, can you tell us of the coming integration of TypeScript tooling? So right now TypeScript is in version 0.9. It's still uh, it's getting there. Right. <laughs> it's beautiful. Right. Uh, I, uh, no, uh, we will have to finish TypeScript later this year, okay. TypeScript 1.0. And the tooling for that, we are starting to think about like, now, hey, whether we could get it done in time mm -hmm. for <coughs> Visual Studio 2013 release, mm -hmm. so that right out of the box, you can get what I call integrated tooling. But as I speak here, I'm sure the team out there is thinking about like, hey, what, do, what can we do? What is doable? What is possible in what time frame? Mm -hmm. As and when we have something concrete, we'll be able to talk to that. But integrating it with Visual Studio is absolutely the goal there. Excellent, man. And by the way, uh, the great Anders Halsberg will be here tomorrow morning, or the first session that we have. And we will talk about TypeScript and I think both and he, C Sharp and Both he things. and Steve Luco, I think, are going to be here. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Steve Luco is going to join Doug Crockford on Friday oh, great, to okay. geek out about JavaScript. Great. Uh, so, it's but really, I should tell you, Eddie, though tell you, didn't, you didn't ask me, I should tell you about this. So far, like you know, we uh, TypeScript we sort of you know, released for the first time last year, mm -hmm. and but it's sort of a preview kind of thing, and we just put out 0.9 version of TypeScript, <coughs> and we are waiting to ship TypeScript 1.0 later this year. Yeah. But even as we go through sort of the preview phases the level of interest, excitement, and more importantly, adoption of TypeScript in people building sort of you know, JavaScript HTML project is just phenomenal. I'm like, you know, really, really, really excited about that. Excellent, man. Hey, it's a, it is such a genius approach to solving the problem of taming the JavaScript beast with types. And I think the team did a great job. They did a beautiful the, job. The team did beautiful a fantastic work, job, man. yeah. So, can I run Visual, to, Visual Studio 2013 on Windows 7, Soma? Yes, you can run Visual Studio 2013 on Windows 7. Great, John, there's your answer. Uh, Atif would like to know, is there, is there design time improvements for XAML? Yes. Okay. So, we, uh, you know, XAML, and as I said before, right, you know, we support XAML either with C++ or with C Sharp and VB kind of thing. And, and the level of adoption that we are seeing with customers on different form factors for XAML is huge. 
and we continue sort of you know innovating and advancing uh, you know Zamo. Excellent. So now that's one of the things that we saw a lot of devices today, but we didn't really talk about the fact that be because of the very nature of XAML itself, if I build a XAML app for, say, a third, I don't think about the, the device. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be a nine inch device. I have to think about my app this way, right? I can build with XAML and have it auto scale, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on across a spectrum of devices. This beautiful thing here, Antoine phone, showed that in one of his demos, didn't he? I, I probably, thought he showed something, yeah. Right. Excellent, so right. but that's an important thing to hammer home to people. That, that That's actually a wonderful feature of that modern UI right. technology. Mm -hmm. Eric would like to know, will TFS 2013 also be released to TFS online as a preview? I don't understand the question. Can tell me the question again? So TFS 2013, the, the non-service. Product, the server product. The server product. Yep. OK. Yes. Uh, yes. You, yes you, yeah, you will get a TFS 2013 server preview product. Okay. But so just so you know, let me take a step back. Please. We have Team Foundation server for people who get excited about uh, deploying a Team Foundation server in their on-premises environment. Got it. And then we have TFS servers, which people who are excited about, like, you know, hey, let me have that capability on the cloud. Let me not worry about you know, deploying it in my on-premises environment and having to manage that. We do that. We, more than anybody else, I would say, believe in what I call the hybrid cloud environment. Mm. As much as like, you know, cloud is here and cloud is here to say, stay, and more and more people are going to be excited about the cloud, there are going to be enough businesses and enough enterprises and enough customers who are going to think about what it means to move to the cloud at their own pace. So we always believe in giving customers the choice to say, hey, you want to think about private cloud? We absolutely support that. You want to think about public cloud? We support that. You want to think about like you know having a cloud environment with one of your trusted hosted partners? We support that. So TFS, it's no different. We believe in the hybrid model. So TFS server and TFS service will both be available for a long time to come because there are going to be some people who are excited about the cloud. Some people are excited about like you know wanting it in their private environment, and we want to take care of both those customers. So hybrid is really sort of the name of the game as far as we are concerned. Excellent. More questions. Thanks for the questions, folks. Keep them coming. Uh, will, two, will VS 2012 support 8.1 development? Uh, no. You will have to come to VS 2013 okay. to be able to uh, do Windows 8.1 development. So, and, and I think people have seen from even the very first developer preview of Windows 8 that, that, that your team is lockstep with Windows and you Absolutely. guys release simultaneously for a reason. To take advantage of the underlying yeah, infrastructure. Basically, the thing that we realized, and you know, for, for, for several years there, we sort of lost our way along in, in this regard, right? Yeah. We said, like, you know, and, and so starting with uh, Visual Studio 2012 and Windows 8, we said we are going to be in lockstep sync because the thing that people care about the most is, like, you know, hey, as much as the platform is exciting and is cool and is great, show me how I can build applications on top of the platform give me a tool set that goes hand in hand with the platform that lets me take advantage of the latest and greatest features in the platform. Sure. Right? So we said like, hey, we're going to be in lockstep sync with Windows. We did that throughout Windows 8 and uh, Visual Studio 2012, mm -hmm. and we are continuing that with Windows 8.1 and Visual Studio 2013, and that's why you've seen us consistently delivering both the tools and the platform hand in hand, and today is no different. Excellent. We delivered Windows 8.1 preview, and we are delivering a tool set preview that goes hand in hand with that. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, so we're continuing on. Thanks again for all the great questions. I mean, can you compile Visual Studio for ARM, Soma? Are you going to release one for RT? Uh, not today. <laughs> <laughs> that was Nikki's question. Yeah, uh, no. I, I, I think Visual Studio you know, is a, what I call one of the most complicated, complex applications that exist. Uh, we we don't have anything you know happening in terms of like you know building it for Windows RT today. Right on. So Hayes would like to know how will Blend integrate with VS 2013? Sure. So one of the things that we did was like you know, hey we looked at like you know Blend as sort of a, a design tool, for, you know for XAML, mm. right? Initially that's how we started, and then we said like you know, hey HTML is this thing and we want to build a design tool and we used the same Blend construct to build a design tool for HTML. So if you look at Visual Studio today. You got a design tool for XAML, and you got a design tool for uh, HTML. 
and for a while there we were thinking like you know hey should it be part of visual studio should it not be part of visual studio should it ship separately kind of thing but then like you know looking at how customers are using and thinking about the integrated workflow between a developer and a designer sometimes it's the same person sometimes it's multiple people inside a team we felt that the best thing to do was to be able to integrate blend into visual studio and be able to ship it as part of visual studio excellent. and that's what you're going to see us do in 2013 and beyond wow excellent so thank you for the great question i believe we have time for one more question uh, and that question is let's do a programming question what programming language and what online guides do you recommend to people new to coding programming, Soma? Right. I, so where should they go? <laughs> <laughs> we we believe in giving you the choice, right? right? So you know, in some sense, like you know, I think I know I, I don't know if we've talked about it this morning or not. We think there are at least three lifestyles that programmers are going to choose. There are people who say like, you know, hey, I want to be close to the metal. I want to get the most, the maximum out of uh, performance and hardware. And those people should naturally gravitate to C++. Okay? Then there is this lifestyle choice that some people make that say, like, hey, I'm sort of interested in building what I call modern applications, whether it is web application or mobile application. And I'm very interested in sort of standards-based programming environment. For those people, they should sort of naturally gravitate to HTML, HTML5 and JavaScript. And then there are people who say, like, hey, my goal in life is to build, like, you know, the the next generation you know, business applications, right? I care about developer productivity a lot. That's the most important thing that I think about. And for those people, they should think about .NET, they should think about C Sharp, they should think about VB. So it really depends on like, you know, hey, where are you coming from? What are you trying to accomplish? What would you like to do? And then we'll give you the choice as to which of the programming models may be more suited to you. And that is why one of the things that we, and we talked about this even during Windows 8. We, thought long and hard about like should we snap to one programming model or should we have like you know a multiple programming models and give developers a choice and we believe that the latter is a better approach from our perspective. Awesome. So I can't tell you one thing, I can tell you what these things exist for mm -hmm. and I'll let you decide and uh, have a great time doing that. Awesome. It's always great to have you on, on Channel Online. Absolutely. Soma. Good talking so to you, Charles, okay? Good job on the release. And give those guys back in Redmond some time off, man. They've been cranking really hard. We'll do it. The Rock team has roll. been working really hard on this, okay? Thank you so great. much, man. Thank Cheers. You. Yeah. Good luck with the rest of Bill. Thank you. Thanks.